Here, I've written some C code that's vulnerable to a buffer overflow. The fgets function reads in hex 100 more bytes than the buffer has room for. Obviously, this bug is fairly trivial, but this scenario is very easy to recreate in the real world when you're calculating things like buffer space remaining in a operation that requires multiple reads. This code is vulnerable to a buffer overflow, but I have stack canaries enabled, which is a default feature in GCC and if I give the program more data than it has room for, the program will gracefully fail with a stack overflow detected. So here the file, our input file, is twice the size of the buffer, which does overflow the stack. But when I run the program, I don't get a full crash, I get a semi-graceful fail that a hacker could not take over. The way this works is actually pretty cool. So every time a process is created, the kernel creates a random number that will be the stack canary. That random number is meant to be a complete secret to the user so that the user cannot replay it when they do a buffer overflow attack. That number is put into a special memory segment at offset hex 28, and we move that into RAX. Then we store that RAX on the stack very, very, very close to the bottom here near RBP. And again, remember the RBP is the base pointer. That's the bottom of our stacks. Anything above it is gonna be negative to it. So that's right at the bottom of our stack, just above the base. So this is a function prolog, the beginning, and this happens before any of my code gets ran. So here is where my code begins. Here's a little snippet that actually reveals the stack canary for a future example. But eventually I print it out and I open up the file and I call fgets. All of this is code that I wrote. And during this time, the stack canary sitting there, he's looking all cute, he's on the stack, he's ready to die for us. Respect the canary, comment. After that, we begin what's called the function prologue and where the stack canary actually gets its use. So what we do is we move the canary at RBP minus eight into RCX, and then we XOR it with that magic value again. And if the result is zero, that means our canary was not corrupted, nothing to worry about. But if we don't take this jump, we will call the stack check fail function, which means our canary has died and our program is full of carbon monoxide. Pretty cool. So what does the canary actually look like? What does it do? How does it smell? How does it taste? Here I've ran the program three times. Each time I've added a little snippet of code to show you the secret canary. It's not actually a secret. You know, you could check it out yourself. The kernel doesn't care if you know. The reason for that is that every time you run a program, you get a new canary from the kernel, a bunch of C's and K's in there. And notice a few things. One, each time it runs, it is random and unique, pretty cool, extremely hard to guess, nigh impossible unless your RNG is bad. And you'll notice this last little character here is zero. Why is that? Why would a random value, a value that's supposed to be non-predictable, have a predictable value. A lot of operations that lead to a buffer overflow are typically related to strings and how are strings terminated. They're terminated with a null byte, which means if you filled up a string buffer right up to the end of a canary and didn't have a zero as the least significant bit, you could actually just print out your string and the canary would be revealed. And again, that's supposed to be a secret. So by putting a zero at the front of the canary, it basically gets rid of the possibility of you being able to leak out the canary via a string operation. There may be other ways to leak it, maybe with a hard read or a hard memory copy. Now I know, hold on, this sounds crazy. I know, hold on, hear me out, hear me out. Let's disable the stack canary. Let's try it, let's see what happens. Now we, we gotta try some new things in life and let, this is gonna be one of them. To disable the stack canary, we're gonna do GCC, TAC O, all the regular stuff, canary.c. We're gonna say TAC F for function or feature. I don't, I don't know what the fuck it stands for, but TAC F no stack protector. Boom, so now the binary is there, and if we run check sec on it again, you will see that there is no canary found. So what does that mean for us? What does that change about our, our functionality? Remember before we ran the program, we ran it on the file. Instead of it being a stack check failed buffer overflow detected, we got a segmentation fault core dumped. That is a very different error, and the most important reason that it's different is because of what happened to our program and why it crashed. If we do, we can run this in GDB real quick and just see what's going on. So we'll GDB the Canary program, and then we'll say that we're going to run it with the, the file as the argument, and then we're gonna see that our program crashed trying to execute instructions at hex 414141, 414141414141. There's a reason why this is extremely dangerous. Now, if you're not sure what these four ones mean, Let's go ahead and cat our the file. All of these A's are hex 41. If you don't believe me, what we can do in Python 3 is we can do bytes dot from hex 4141 4141 
quad A. Boom. By not putting a stack protector or a stack canary on our function, we gave the file the ability to determine where the program returned to and ultimately what instructions got ran by the program. This is the classic buffer overflow scenario for a hacker that wants to do evil stuff. So in summary, don't disable your damn canary. Now let's circle back to all you damn heat people. Okay, I know there were some of you probably the minute you saw this video, you're like, oh my God, just allocate it in the heap. All right, fine, fine. We wanna play that game? Okay. I made the data buffer a pointer into the heap where we call malloc hex 100 Yoda notation to make sure that we actually get a variable back from malloc. And then we're gonna do is we're just gonna load that file, same thing, and we're gonna also read in double the size of the buffer. Again, you can buffer overflow on the stack, you can buffer overflow on the heap. And I'm not even gonna disable anything. I'm gonna use the default flags on the compiler. Boom, we do get one little error about not including standard lib for malloc, but that's not a big deal. Get rid of that, run the canary on the file. Why are there not canaries in the heap? I'm looking at you, libc maintainers. Obviously, I'm joking. I'm not making any real assertion that any kind of memory is more safe than the other. Obviously, the heap contains data. The stack contains control flow information, so completely different. And before you go, I want to talk about a longtime supporter of this channel that allows me to keep making videos like this, improving the equipment, and keeping the low-level learning going. This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. The best way to learn something is to get your hands dirty and try it out. And Brilliant.org knows this. Their hands-on visual approach is an effective and easy way to make daily learning a habit in your life. They have thousands of lessons that go from foundational to advanced in topics like math, AI, computer science, and neural networks. Instead of just staring at presentations or slides all day, you'll learn something new and then immediately be able to go in and try it for yourself. And the best part is you can try Brilliant for free right now. If you use my link, brilliant.org slash level learning, you get a free 30 day trial and the first 200 of you to sign up get 20% off an annual subscription. Thank you again, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video.